Jeremiah chapter number 21. We'll begin our reading in verse number 12. The Bible says, O house of David, thus saith the Lord, execute judgment in the morning, and deliver him that is spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor, lest my fury go out like fire, and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Behold, I am against thee. Let me just say this right now. If God tells you he's against you, that's not a good thing. Hmm? It's one thing if a neighbor's against you. It's another thing if a co-worker or student, a co-student uh, is against you. It's another thing if the government's against you. But if God's against you, you have no hope. Uh, again in verse 13, Behold, I am against thee, O inhabitant of the valley and rock of the plain, saith the Lord, which say, Who shall come down against us, or who shall enter into our habitations? But I will punish you according to the fruit of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will kindle a fire in the for forest thereof, and it shall devour all things round about it. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing and the good testimonies. Lord, we thank you for the good sweet spirit in the house of God tonight. Now, Father, we thank you for the precious word of God. As Brother Donald said, you preserved it so that we could hear it and know the ways of salvation. Lord, we also know your commandments and statutes thereby. Lord, you gave the law to be our schoolmaster, and then, God, you gave us the word to give us grace and strength and help in time of need. Now, Father, increase our faith tonight. Help us, Lord, to set in heavenly places. Enlighten our minds to truth and stir our hearts for righteousness' sake. Now, Father, we just pray your perfect will would be done. Lord, there are times we're in the valley. Lord, we're thankful you're the lily of the valleys. God, there's times we're on the mountaintop, and Lord, we can shout the victory when we're on the mountaintop. But Lord, we're glad regardless of where we find ourselves, you're a friend that's sticking closer than a brother, and you've never left us nor forsaken us. Now, Father, help us tonight uh, to ever draw closer to God that you might draw closer to us. Meet every need of every heart. Touch those that are sick. Touch those that are providentially hindered. And, Father, get glory to your name, and we'll thank you for all that you do, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen and amen. We find in the book of Jeremiah a lot that could be said about Israel. Can I say, first of all, Israel had ignored God's pleadings. Many times he sent them prophets, and they ignored what thus saith the Lord. Can I say, I wonder how much preaching we've heard and how much we've heeded to. You see, if we don't heed to it, we ignore it. We find that Israel ignored God's pleadings. Throughout the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah is pleading with them to repent and turn back to God. In the book of Jeremiah, we find that they not only worship false gods... Uh, not only had groves of false idols that they'd bow down and worship to, uh, but they even offered up their own very children uh, and burnt them to gods uh, 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 that are false. Uh, my dear friends, and yet God warned them, and God pled with them, and God dealt with them, and they ignored the voice of God. Can I say Israel had done injustice to God's prophets? They stoned them. Mm, they beat them. They ran them off. And even Jeremiah in the chapter before, he's in the stocks before the temple, and they're making fun of him, and they're mocking him. And later in the book of Jeremiah, they put him in a junk dungeon and leave him for dead. Uh, 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 they showed injustice to God's men. And yet, they did not fear. Can I say, all across this globe, there are men of God that will stand and proclaim the word of God only to be offered up at the dinner table by the people who sat under his preaching to run him down and, uh, and talk about him and talk about his family and all kinds of things. And people just don't reverence and respect God's men. That's nothing new. It's always been. They not only ignored God's pleadings and done injustice to God's prophets, but they insisted on doing things their way. 
In chapter number 6, Jeremiah told them to get back to the old paths. That was the good way. Walk therein. They'd find rest for their souls. Uh, they said, we will not walk therein. Can I say, there are many people, they'll sit under preaching, they'll read their Bible, and they'll still choose to live their way and not the way that God intends for them. But in spite of the fact that they ignored God's pleading, in spite of the fact they'd done injustice to God's men, in spite of the fact that they insisted on doing things their way, yet in this chapter we find they want God's involvement for them. Look in verse number 2. Hmm? Now don't get all bogged down, we're going somewhere tonight. Verse number 2 says, Inquire, this is Zedekiah, uh, sending pasture uh, 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 to uh, Jeremiah the prophet, says, Inquire, I pray thee, of the Lord for us, for Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, maketh war against us. Uh, if so be that the Lord will deal with us according to all his wondrous works, uh, that he may go up from us. Uh, 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 here they're saying, Jeremiah, go, go see if the Lord's going to do all his wonderful works now because Nebuchadnezzar's going to make war with us. Uh, well, Jeremiah, for 20 chapters, has been warning them that's what's going to happen. And yet they didn't believe. It's kind of like when Noah preached for 120 years it was going to rain. They didn't believe either until the rain started falling from the sky. Uh, you see, there comes a problem when you ignore God one time too many, and then God says, it's it, that's it, it's over. And you can inquire of Him all you want to. That don't mean you're going to get His wondrous works. And we see many times people sit under preaching, sit under preaching, sit under preaching. You never see them broken in the altar. You never see them ever doing business with God. But you let one of their youngins get sick, and then, oh, they want the whole church praying for them. Hmm? My dear friends, we see they wanted God, God's involvement. Now, notice a few things in this chapter. I'll get to the thought. Notice that there was a war to be lost. Look at verse number 4. Here's how God answers them after they inquired of him. Verse number 4, the Bible says, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, wherewith ye fight against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans, which besiege you without the walls, uh, and I will assemble them into the midst of this city, uh, and I myself will fight against you. God said, Listen, uh, I, I'm going to turn back your weapons that you're planning on using in the war, and uh, I, I'm going to uh, take those that are coming against you and put them right in the midst of the city, but uh, make no mistake, I'm going to fight against you. Uh, 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 he says, with an outstretched hand uh, and with a strong arm, even in anger and in fury and in great wrath, uh, and I will smite the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast, uh, they shall die of a great pestilence. Uh, and afterwards, saith the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants and the people, uh, and such are left in this city from the pestilence, uh, from the sword and from the famine, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, uh, into the hand of their enemies, and into the hand of those that seek their life. Uh, and he shall smite them with the edge uh, of the sword. He shall not spare them, neither have pity nor have mercy. There was a war to be lost. God said, enough's enough. Oh, they said, Jeremiah, go inquire the Lord. See if he's going to once again move with his wondrous works and spare us. God said, oh, no, as a matter of fact, I'm going to fight against you. I'm sending pestilence and famine and whatever's left. Then the king of Nebuchadnezzar is going to have his way with the rest of you. And they're not going to show any pity or mercy. There was a war to be lost. But notice there is a way to life. Look at verse number 8. Aren't you glad God's always been a God of mercy? Look at verse number 8. And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I have set before you the way of life and the way of death. He that abideth in this city shall die by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he that goeth out and falleth into the hands of the Chaldeans that besiege you, he shall live, and his life shall be unto him for a prey. He said, listen. He said, you've got a choice, life or death. And I say there is a way to life. A lot of people don't want to hear it. The way to life, you must repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And if not, you're going to die. You're going to die physically, and then you're going to die for all of eternity in a place called hell where you'll pay for your own sins. It's a spiritual death. You'll never, ever end. You will exist forever, dying every second of every day of eternity in torments and pain because you refuse Jesus Christ who paid your sin debt and already took your hell for you. We see there was a war to be lost. There was a way to life. But then we see there's a wrath to be levied. Look again in verse number 14. We read verses 12 through 14. And God said, I'm against thee. But look in verse 14. But I will punish you according to the fruit of your doing, saith the Lord. And I will kindle a fire in the forest thereof, and it shall devour all things round about it. Isn't it amazing? Some people won't ever look for God till they lose their health. It's amazing how somebody, when they're laying in a hospital bed, they can see real clear. Isn't it amazing when people have somebody in their life that is their whole world that when it takes God removing that person for them to look to God? Hmm. There's so many things that people put their trust and confidence in until God removes it. And they're left with nothing but their pride in God. Which one will they choose? When God burns down the force, it reveals hidden things, it removes all hindrances, but it revives halted growth. Now, we don't like to hear this because we're supposed to save the trees. But you know, there's a whole uh, agricultural uh, ecosystem in the forestry that what they do is they go and they cut down dead trees and they remove a lot of uh, dead branches so growth will take place. You get something too overloaded, nothing's going to grow. There's only so much soil, and there's only so much nitrate in the soil, and they have to cut things back in order for things to grow. Can I say, when God burns down the forest, it revives halted growth. We don't like to think about this in the church world. Obviously, the Bible commands the church to grow because we're to go and tell every creature, and we're to grow the nurture and admonition of the world, and we know it's God's will that everybody would get saved. Uh, but can I say that in the church world, uh, uh, if you're not careful, you get a lot of dead branches, if you, if you want to hang with me here in a second. And those dead branches get in the way of others growing. And sometimes you got to prune them back in order for it to grow. And sometimes God will cut churches down so it'll grow. I believe that's what happened here about 20 years ago, 25 years ago. Uh, uh, the church wasn't doing what it should be doing. God let it get all the way down where it was almost just a sprig. Uh, and all of a sudden God began to grow it and began to bless it. Uh, and sometimes he's got to cut it back for it to grow. You have to do that in your garden if you do any gardening. You can't put 75 trees in a little bitty spot. They're going to start dying. You've got to make certain uh, to work that soil properly. And can I say, God burns down a forest to revive halted growth. He also burned down the forest to ready hollow ground. That hollow ground is important. Sometimes it's lost. Israel and Judah had forgotten the land that they had built their lives on. God had promised to Abraham. It was hallowed ground. By the way, the Middle East had forgotten it too. Uh, all the nations keep telling Israel to give up part of their uh, uh, land to the Palestinians. i got news for you. Uh, the Palestinians have no right to it, but Israel's only living on a fraction of the land that God promised uh, Abraham. And hey, when the Lord comes back, uh, they're going to have all the Middle East that was promised to them. Hmm? Can I say, sometimes he burns it down because it's hallow ground and he readies the hallow ground for him to do business with his people again. Now I thought about this. God will burn down the forest to bring reverence to himself again. They weren't reverencing God anymore. 
Now here's the whole, whole theme of the message. This is the whole reason. Now listen, listen to me well. America has forgotten God. And the Bible says in Psalms 9, 17, all nations that forget God shall be turned into hell. That's what the Bible says. You wonder why there was rioting in our streets in America last year? She's been turned into hell. America has kicked God out of schools, has kicked God out of the government. Do you realize there was a time where you couldn't even testify in a court of law if you didn't believe in God? Do you realize that there was a time when all of our politicians sought God before they would vote on bills? Do you realize there was a time when the politicians would come into the churches uh, and they'd ask for the preachers uh, 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 to uh, uh, let them know what God thought about things before they would enact bills? They'd always come to God's people and deal with God's people directly. But yet now America says that churches are non-essential. Do you realize there was a time in America was against the law to do any business on Sunday? The Lord's Day? But America don't care about God anymore. America's made a God out of football. America's made a God out of Hollywood. America's made a God out of anything else other than Almighty God. Can I say, America's even made a God out of politicians. It could just be that Donald Trump is not in the White House tonight because when God gave us a space of grace in allowing him to sit in the White House five years ago, people got to worshiping Donald Trump. I know preachers that worshiped Donald Trump. Now don't get me, don't get me, you know, don't mistake me, I, I was a Trump fan. Donald Trump done more for the church than any president in my lifetime. Donald Trump is not Almighty God. I believe he was an instrument that God used. But instead of America giving glory to God, they gave it to Trump. Could be why God didn't allow him to be seated in the White House. I didn't say not win the election. He won the election. He's not seated in the White House tonight. Hmm? They put their trust in Trump more than they did God. Could be why a lot of uh, people's 401ks are taking a hit right now because they was putting their trust in the stock market and the 401ks more than they were Almighty God. God might have been just burning down some forest. Are you listening? People put their trust in their lifestyles and They'll build barns and build them bigger and they'll play golf and they'll uh, 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 go fishing and they'll go boating and they'll go to every sporting event uh, and they'll go here and they'll go there and they'll buy and sell and gain. Uh, so God allowed a pandemic to come in. And let me just say this, a man-made pandemic. What we've had in America and in the world for the last 18 months is nothing different than any other flu season, swine flu, bird flu, uh, uh, cockadoo flu, whatever you want to call it. For 18 months in Boone County, there was one case of flu diagnosed. But now all of a sudden, everybody's got to get their flu shot again this year. You know why? Because everybody's figured out Grouchy Fauci was lying to them. Even lied to Congress. How come that sucker's not in jail? Hmm? 
You lie to Congress and see, they'll, they'll plant you in a dungeon somewhere and nobody even... By the way, they arrested people on January 6th uh, and it's been proven the FBI is the one that did that insurrection uh, and those people haven't even br been brought to bring forth bail. Uh, they've been sitting in jail since January 6th uh, and haven't had no day in court. Uh, you know why? Because they know the truth. I'm just saying... God could have allowed this pandemic to come to separate the men from the boys, so to speak. Do you know how many churches have closed their doors? Do you know how many churches are running in the tens and twenties right now? Do you know how many churches can't pay their bills? You know why? Because they believed in the governor instead of God. I talked to a man today. He said, Preacher, how's your church doing? I said, God's been blessed. I said, We had a, had a couple join on Sunday, baptized a fellow in the church uh, 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 Sunday night. I said, God's been good. God's been a blessing. And he acted like I was speaking Greek or Hebrew. He said, Really? I said, We're running about 20. They also shut down half of last year. Hmm? God's just burning some forest. He's revealing some hidden things. Are you listening? He's removing some hindrances. Isn't it amazing when the only place you could go to was church and they was closing churches? Can I say? God could be allowing inflation. I've seen where wages are going up on average 4% over what they were last year, but inflation's up 7%. So you're losing money. Could it be because too many people have robbed God? Could it be that when gasoline was down about $1.79 a gallon, you wasn't thanking God for it? So he just let it go up back three bucks. Might be just burning down some forests so we can gain some real perspective. Hmm? Might be allowing some hardness come so we'll really start praying. So we'll really start getting serious. And he might be allowing all this to happen, Brother Tommy, so that people who don't know him will start looking to some of us that do know him and say, what is it about you that all this stuff doesn't upset you? Well, let me tell you, his name is Jesus. Maybe he's readying hallow ground. Maybe he is getting America to the point where America will once again reverence Almighty God. Because I promise you one thing, there's nobody worshiping Biden. I feel sorry for the guy. You know, used to I picked on him, but I, I really, I feel sorry for the guy. I'm thinking, this poor old guy, he don't even know where he's at. Do you understand the man that sits in the White House used to be known as the leader of the free world? This guy can't even eat a bowl of oatmeal without dribbling it down his chin, man. He doesn't know where he's at. They parade him out there and make a fool out of him because the wicked people behind him want power what it's all about I'm glad I know the one who has all power his name is Jesus I said all that say, God may be burning down the force so you and I can be doing what we should have been doing all along tell folks about Jesus he is the answer and maybe if we start shining as lights and 
being the salt of the earth and proclaiming the gospel like we should, then folks will start getting born again and more start getting born again. And folks will start worshiping Jesus and all of a sudden God might turn this whole thing around. The only thing I know is that without Him, America's in a mess. The only hope for America is Him. And the only hope that America will know Him is us. I've done told you, church after church after church after church is folding up in America. They're doing everything they can just to hold on to themselves and just hang in there and ride the storm. They're not thriving. It's going to take folks like us to impact this world. We can't depend on other folks doing it. God's called us to do it. Now, God's burnt down the forest. Now, it's time for you and I to start planting some trees. It's time for you and I to start watering some trees. It's time for you and I to start praying over some trees. Hmm? Because the only hope for them is us. So let me ask you a question. Are you ready for Christmas? I'm not talking about December 25th. I'm talking about when he comes. Are you ready for him? The only thing you can take to heaven with you is other people. How many are you taking? That's the only, only thing that will matter a hundred years from now is what you did for Jesus. And the only thing that matters what you did for Jesus is how many souls you've helped to win. That's the only thing that matters. But how come churches are involved in everything but sharing the gospel? So that's what it's about. Why do you think we sing songs about Jesus so they can hear about him? Why do you think we preach the right book so they can hear about him? Why do you think we broadcast what we do on, on, in YouTube channel and our Facebook channel and everything so they can hear about Jesus? Why do you think we have all them tracks so we can take them out and tell them about Jesus uh, Friends, it's up to us. Imagine this. Imagine you're unchurched. You don't know nothing about church. And you started looking around. Where would you look? Where would you go? I mean, I make a joke of it all the time about the weathermen lying to you, but they really do. You can't put your trust in the news. I mean, I grew up with Walter Cronkite. You could trust what that man was telling you. Al Shadakati. Man smiled, his face would crack. Had that monotone voice. But you know what? He told you the news in Cincinnati. Huh? What was the sports guy with the bad toupee? McMahon. Jack Moran. Who said that? Who said, huh, Brother Rod? Yeah, me and Rod, we're old enough. He did the BPA bowling on Saturday too, Jack Moran did. Sports of all sorts. Hey, them guys, they tell you the truth. They tell you the scores. Now, everything's got to be a production. If you're unchurched and you're looking around for truth, where are you going to find it in this world? Now, think about if you decide, well, I, maybe i got to turn to God. Where are you going to turn to? They're not going to go to the Catholic Church because all the stories about all the pedophile priests and everything that's going on in the Catholic Church, uh, they're saying, that's a mess. Uh, and they start looking around, and all these other churches are a mess. Uh, and they got Joel telling them every day is a Friday, but it's Wednesday, and it's not a good day on Wednesday, so it can't be Friday. Uh, uh, I mean, they're looking around for answers. Who's giving them to them? They go to Seven Hills for about three weeks and they get tired of that. And they get saying, well, that's what I used to go to in the 70s. We called it a rock concert. Huh? 
They start going to this little Baptist church and they're closing the doors. And they start going down here and they're closing the doors. And they're going down here and it's just nothing but fluff. We have the answer. We have the truth. We need to tell them. We need to show them. We need to share it with them. God's burnt down the forest. I really believe that. So that folks can see Him. Romans 10 says, How shall they hear except there be a preacher? And How can they go except they be sent? Well, He sent us. You say, I'm not a preacher. Well, you're king and priest in Christ. And you don't have to be a preacher to give somebody a track. You don't have to be a preacher to say, Hey, we'd love to have you down at Emmanuel Baptist Church. God's doing some wonderful things. Why don't you come and be in service with us? No telling what God will do in people's lives. If the redeemed of the Lord say so. A lot of you had beautiful testimonies tonight. Tell it out there. Next time you're eating at a restaurant, say, you know what, you have done a wonderful job serving me. Can I just tell you, Jesus has been the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I'd sure like to share him with you. You say, preach, I can't do it. Give him a track. Tell them, you've done a wonderful job serving me. Can I give you the greatest thing that ever happened to me? Just give them a track. Next time you're waiting in line for the blue light special at what used to be Kmart. I don't even know what they have anymore. And the lines are 47 deep, like at Kroger's, where they got 15 cash registers and only one open. You're in management. Do something about that. Get some of these 16-year-olds running a register. They, they're not getting the carts out of the parking lot so at least put them on a register you can't even find a cart but you've waited 17 deep and the poor little cash register ladies are stressed out because everybody's complaining don't you got another cash register person here and she's called 15 times for people to come to register go up there and say ma'am you're doing a good job I know it's been stressful on you. You're doing a good job. Can I share with you the greatest thing that ever happened to me? Just hand her a track. You see, a lot of opportunities we have. By the way, we're Tony's not here tonight because Miss Annette would have killed him if she'd have been here. I guess he was at the office today. Was he at the office today or yesterday or sometime? Anyway, he plastered the office with tracks. Well, that's a blessing, except everybody there knows Miss Annette's married to me and my name's on every one of them tracks. So they think she done it. You say, is that bad? That Brother Tony, at least he's doing something. The only time I've ever told him about it is when he was sticking them in the beer cartons at Kroger's. And Kroger's called me because so many of the drunks was getting upset at having to read the gospel to get their beer. So I said, don't put them in the beer cart. Put them all around it, but don't put them in there anymore, Brother Tony. Kroger's is coming after us. Hmm. At least he's doing something. Now, can I help you with something? A lot of us have a whole lot more education, Brother Tony. A lot of us have a lot better health than Brother Tony. He's doing something, are you? Hmm? Now, don't tell him I complimented him. Please don't. His head's big enough as it is. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying is, a lot of what's going on in this world didn't just happen. It's all according to God's plan. You know it's God who puts kings in positions. Biden's in the White House because God allowed it. Fauci promoted the lies because God allowed it. Are you listening? Everything that's going on it has not caught God by surprise. He's allowed it, and it could be. So you and I. And go out in a blaze of glory. So we.
and let sinners know Jesus saves, Jesus saves. What better time than Christmas time to let people know what really brings joy to the world? His name is Jesus. Yes, God's burnt down the forest. I believe that. For such a time as this, that you and I can shine brightly in this depressed, dark, stressed out world. So go, shine for Jesus. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. You got somebody not saved in your family, you ought to come pray for them. If they won't listen to you, pray God send somebody else their way. got somebody that lives in another part of the world, pray God send somebody to them. But why don't we all ask God for such a time as this to open doors for us to shine for Him. They're praying. He's picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, I know nothing has happened by accident or chance. God, everything has been ordered of the Lord. God, it could be you want to bring America to her knees so she'll look up. God, help us to point them to where they'll look. God, use us to help folks around here see Jesus high and lifted up. Lord, there's a lot of folks probably seeking answers. We know you're the answer. Help us to let them know. Father, bless now. These in the altar, whatever they're here for, help them, bless them. Speak to hearts. God glorify your name. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.